After the drama of the men's team final, we turn our attention next to the final of the ladies' singles competition. Contested this year by 2006 world champion and perennial finalist Emma Cunningham from Northern Ireland, and the surprise package of this year's tournament, Renata Delahunty from Australia. We join the action right at the beginning of the match, and having won the lag, it's Emma Cunningham that will get proceedings underway. Once again in the commentary box, we've got Mark Shepherd here. And Mark, what's your thoughts on uh, how this game could be going today? What well, as you say, a surprising game to be having in the first place. Only the second time since 2004 when Sue Thompson and Emma Cunningham haven't battled out the final. Emma Cunningham pretty much made the final her own, even though she's only won on one occasion back in 2005. Red hot favourite going into this final, in the sense that she's the one with bags of experience, been there, done everything. Renata Delahunty, though, amazing performance in this tournament, has beaten some very good players along the way, so certainly wouldn't be a surprise to see her do well. But this will be the first time she's played out in this big arena, in front of lots of people and in front of the cameras. Interesting to see how she handles the pressure. Yeah, and if you've uh, we've got some viewers out there who think they recognise the name Delahunty, well, uh, it's a legend in the Australian game, Mick Delahunty, is actually Renata's husband. And he was the captain of the World Championship winning side of 2000, sorry, 1996. And they took the title back to Australia. And Mick hasn't made the trip, but uh, I'm sure, Mick, you're listening to us. So welcome to you and welcome to all of our viewers from Australia. I'm sure you're all tuned in. It's uh, not too late in the day at the moment over in Oz. And uh, I'm sure you're looking forward to what could be a great final here between these two ladies. Yeah, superb performance all around from Australia at these championships. Australian over 50s team lifted the title. Got Renata in this final. Ben Noonan we saw in yesterday's semi-final. Men's team also reached the semi-final of the team event. Nice to see some payback. Huge long journey. 10, 12,000 miles for some of the players to make their way up to Blackpool. So we get back to the action on the table as the Favourite Emma Cunningham that's won the lag, made the break and started the first clearance off well. Yeah, she's not made too good of a job of that though. She's uh, not only really not got a pot other than an improbable plant, but she's also tied the black up with that shot. So uh, I think it's important that uh, if Renata does get to the table here, she gets a good start. Because what she wouldn't want to see is Emma Cunningham get maybe two or three frames on the board. Uh, but at the moment she's just had to sit in a seat and wait her opportunity. I'm very pleased to be joined in the commentary box by 2008 world champion Lynette Horsborough. How do you see the match going Lynette? Well I think it's a really good pairing really and it's nice not to have Sue versus Emma in final as much as um, I think Sue's a legend of the game. Come on Renata, come on mate. So I think Ladies Pool's going to be the winner whoever wins. Yeah, I've got to admit, I I thought coming into this championships, I didn't think we would have an Emma Sue final again. But I actually thought it was going to be the other way around. I thought Sue would be here, and I didn't think Emma had been playing well enough in sort of like probably over the last twelve months. Maybe not recently. I'm not sure on her recent results, but certainly just seemed to whether her game had dipped over the last twelve months. And uh, you know, in these championships last year, she didn't look. At, at ease with a game so I thought oh maybe it'll be Sue versus somebody else and obviously we've been proved completely wrong and we'll see there great first pot from Renata and I think Emma's um, re-motivated herself since last year though. she's actually won the European Championships and she's just been crowned the World Masters Champion so she's actually on for the treble here which um, is quite a feat yeah and uh, as you say took that World Masters crown over the weekend Great performance. Oh, she was a little bit unlucky there, Renata. I'm sure she was just wanting that red to hang over the pocket and cover the yellow. But uh, certainly not showing any uh, early nerves here, Mark. No, it's been a new face to a lot of people. And I think a lot of people will be curious just to see how she equips herself and also what kind of player she is, whether she likes going for the finishes or plays more tactically. She's very much an unknown quantity compared with the likes of Sue Thompson that we see year on year in this final. But as you say, looks in facial mannerisms very composed and doing the right thing so far on the table. Lynette, you were the 
involved in the last final in 2008 with the last time it wasn't Emma against Sue. What does it feel like stepping out in that arena in front of so many people? Well, I just really enjoyed it. I thought, you know, you don't get this opportunity often, so just go out and enjoy it. Um, and I spoke to our, well, both of the girls before, and they're just determined to enjoy the experience. Um, I think Renata's um, actually, she's the Australian captain, and she's got a real calmness about her. And um, she's just going to make the most of it. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely the, the way to think about it. I remember watching Emma Cunningham for the first time back in 2004 when she first got to the final. And she's got a sort of slightly timid look about her and she was only a teenager back then and did amazingly to get to the final and just looked a bit overwhelmed. But over the years, got an increasing assurance and having played so many times, must be really thinking this is her venue to play at now. Well, she's somewhat of a veteran, really. That's, that's like the seventh, um, the seventh appearance in the final that Emma's made. And she definitely looks relaxed in this start. Yeah, great opportunity now here for Emma Cunningham. In this first frame, as I say, it, it is early days, but uh, Renata won't like to see her get too many frames on the board before she gets takes her first frame. Well, the eight's down and Emma Cunningham opens her account. And she leads by one frame to nil in this best of 15 ladies world final. The second frame having also gone the way of the 2006 world champion, we rejoin proceedings midway through the third frame. Emma Cunningham at the table. I think she's going to screw down to put the white ball where it was before and then just cannon into the black. Yeah, she's dealt with this quite well. She's got a good angle now to screw up the table. And even if she doesn't land perfectly on this yellow, the worst case scenario, if she had to play the black up towards the pocket that that red's nearest and, and was to cover that, that would probably give her control even if it didn't go in. Or ideally disturb it off this shot. That looks pretty much perfect, I think. She got a lingering look suggests she's not absolutely happy, but yeah. looks like she has just about good enough angle. Always chancing slightly to luck, depending on how much pace she, sh she can get, whether she can get the black right out into the middle of the table or whether she's just going to nudge it slightly off the cushion. Oh dear. <coughs> just hit the contact was too thin there. So she has left a tough shot now. Yeah, I mean that was the worst possible result. If she wasn't going to cannon it, she'd have been better just dropping, dropping behind on it. it. Yeah. I mean, this is difficult because... She can't, well, she can cut it down the cushion, but realistically, cutting it all the way past the middle pocket and down isn't much of a go, but not easy to play a safety shot either with the red over the top right hand corner pocket. I think the only shot here is maybe try and flick off the black and come it down, but uh, yeah, she's trying to do there uh, at all. I thought she could have flicked off the black pin and brought the, the cue ball and dropped it on the bottom rail. Tried to cover the, the, the red at the top of the table, knowing that the other red was sort of close to the side rail. Just wonder how good Renata Delahunty is at doubling the ball here, because uh, she has got the double into the middle pocket. I mean, yeah. for me as a player, I think there's two options here, but obviously I don't always, I don't always take the right shots. Um, either take the um, red over the pocket down the table first or just snooker behind the, the red and side cushion. And she's opted for the double and she's got it. Great shot there from Renata. So now this is just all about Go getting position on the black. It's interesting how different players play a different route. I would have played the this red now. I'd have played that first shot and played on the red down the rail because it was near the black. <coughs> I thought she needed to get a little bit further over and get this black a lot straighter. Cue ball needed to be above the middle pocket and further over to the, the left hand rail. So just wonder whether she thinks 
she can cut it well she can cut it obviously but whether the uh, again the double might have been the higher percentage shot here quite easy to rattle and leave over but she hasn't down it goes and Arta Delahunty cuts the deficit it's just one frame she trails by it's two on Emma Cunningham Unfortunately for Australian supporters, that wasn't to be the start of a major winning streak by Renata Delahunty. And as we jump forward to the beginning of the ninth frame, it's Emma Cunningham that leads by six frames to two. Both players enjoying a lot of support in the room. There's a big camp on the left and right hand sides of the arena behind each of them. Emma Cunningham, as we were saying earlier, got the support of the Northern Ireland team and also some of the Buck team. A lot of the Australian team behind Renata. The Australian team has been a very loud presence in the arena all week, really getting behind their man Ben Noonan in his semi-final yesterday. So they're from Northern Ireland though to get things underway in this frame. <coughs> no balls down off the break, not, not an ideal split. The balls have moved around a bit with several clusters around the table. Renata for me has just been a bit tentative in a couple of the last few shots. That one nice in the last frame where Played with a rest, looking to screw back into the middle of the table, just under hit it, left that long red, which she then went on to miss. One of those situations where you're not really quite sure what to start with. Kind of problems all the way around the table, whichever colour you go for. Yes, my That's a much better shot. She's much more confident, really got through that properly few of the previous ones you feel she's just quit on slightly when she's been delivering the key but that time she struck it nicely. See Emma behind her in her chair still looking quite nervous but particularly given Emma's experience of finals where she's I don't think she's ever played anyone apart from Sue Thompson so it'd be a new experience for her and a new experience going into the match's favourite because although she has won once she's probably always been the second favourite going into each of the contests. Yeah it's a completely different outlook really isn't it? And obviously she knows that she's going to have a different kind of game really. With, with Sue it's very aggressive play, which Emma does like. Um, with Renata I think I, I, have a bit, I just feel that she's a bit more of an all-rounder. But her long potting is very um, precise normally. Yeah, I mean she's pulled out some good pots. I think you know, that black earlier on in the match that we were enthusing about down the left-hand side kitchen. Since then, that seems quite a long time ago. A few disappointing misses creeping in. I mean, Emma will be well used to being the favourite in events because she's number two seed for this and for a lot of tournaments she enters will be a red-hot favourite but for this particular tournament it will be a new experience. Oh, that's a great combination shot. Excellent shot. There's a lot to do with that. There are several balls to hit and a lot to judge. It's absolutely perfect. So now it's just the question of the... Well, I say just the question. There's obviously mm. the, the two on the right-hand side aren't aren't perfect but there's a way of getting on both of those the, the, the most difficult one is going to be the red nearest the black it possibly does pot into the top left hand corner pocket as we look at it but you have to be you fairly have to precise get perfect, won't you? you have to get perfectly behind it well, you know, not what she was trying it may not be absolutely the worst result in the world I've seen a lot of players Excellent. struggling so I was going to say, those shots were playing twice across the table, people seem to have struggled. I think a lot of people get the position wrong, and that time she's missed the pot as well. It's certainly not easy from here on the yellows. No, I and mean Emma will be pleased to be at the table. At the same time, it's not that straightforward an opportunity at this point. I don't think she's going to be rushing to move any of the, the yellows near the black for the time being. So is she considering a tactical foul here? Yeah, it's decided. I think, for example, she was playing Sue Thompson. I'm not sure whether that would be a viable shot, but I think playing Renata, she's just needing one or two too many opportunities to clear up in a frame. So, probably thinking that with two shots from here, it's still quite difficult. It's got the red down in the bottom right hand corner pocket, which is going to have to be doubled across the table. And then, still got the problem with the black and red together. if she's down to pot that because if she'd been able to retain the two visits this would have been much easier absolutely I 
think me and Renata were discussing the um, supreme centre pockets, and you, um, you you couldn't really attempt to play the the red in the right right centre pocket to screw into the black and red because they do tend to pop out these supreme tables, which Ben Noonan found to his cost last night. Yeah, I mean you can see she's just got she just had a, an inch less angle than that. She was just very slightly straighter. I think that would be the right shot, yeah. but I, I think I mean it's not it's not inconceivable, but she should have to get hold of the the white really well and she's been somewhat struggling to get enough spin on the ball. I'm not sure what she's played there. Does she think does this red pot down into the bottom left hand corner pocket? Is she Possibly she's gonna pot it off the red. Well, it does. Well, that was close. Oh, I'm sure that was a foul then. Absolutely sure that she's hit the yellow first. It was certainly close, that's for sure. Yeah, we have had that confirmed. That, that was definitely a foul. Two visits have been called, so not good for Renata there, as you say. Not really understand understood she thought she could play that shot whether she'd had a look and thought well she if a little bit further over she mm -hmm. could have played it but I don't uh I thought maybe the option there was to pot the red off the red and I thought she could see enough of it I certainly did think she could see enough of it to pot it but as it happened she knocked in one of Emma's, Emma's yellows anyway yeah but uh I'm not whether sure whether that's helped Emma there she potted one yellow to the other and they both went in. It's not caused her too much it's great hardship. how easy the finishes are when yeah. you have two shots in the bag there. Yeah. They're so much easier, especially with a 6-2 lead. Yeah. And she's got the option, she can just stun up the table here. And take the other yellow we can see into the same middle pocket. And then just come back for the yellow into the opposite middle. Could have gone a little bit further than she wanted to there. Nicely controlled shot from Emma there. The yellow past the black into that top left hand corner pocket. The bulk end of the table. Well, I say it does. She had to have a look at two or three times at this. Maybe she's just looking to set this up. No, it went clean. Obviously just composing herself, take that little bit of extra time. So this eight for a five frame lead. And it's now Emma Cunningham one frame away from her second world title. Straight on then into the tenth frame. A frame that Emma Cunningham needs to add a second world title to her collection. And one that Renata Del Hunty needs to keep alive her hopes of a first. Oh, just uh, I say really Renata Del Hunty now. I don't, don't know what she can do from here because she's not really looked at a game since we got into that scrappy phase of this match at at three, all right, she's three one down, but it didn't look too bad. She, you know, she things had been working reasonably well, and we had sort of two or three really scrappy frames, and maybe she just lost away a little bit. She breaks off in frame ten. Right, she took a little bit off the break shot there, but uh, she's made a yellow. And, uh, the reds look just that little bit more inviting than the yellows here, and she does have one left middle. It's hard to be positive uh, when you're 7-2 down, but you know at the same time you're thinking, well, I've nothing to lose, just go for my shots now, and there's certainly a finish on on the reds. She just just has to go for it now. Yeah, it'd be nice for Anata, even if a comeback, needing to win six frames in a row, is asking too much in front of a lot of supporters and a lot of friends and family, no doubt, watching back in Australia, it'd be nice for her to put on the best possible performance. I don't think there's any doubt anybody that's watched her play earlier in the week knows what an extremely good player she is. Hasn't quite done herself justice in this final. 
There, there again, not the most difficult of reds she's missed. And when you look at the position she left, not absolutely perfect. Well, I'm wondering if there was a bad contact on there. Yeah, it certainly looks like it. Emma straight away asked the uh, the referee to clean the white. And, uh, and the problem is, I think she's left Emma half a chance because where that cue ball's finished, she can now take the yellow into the top left-hand corner and leave herself a shot on the the yellow that's on the boat rail because that's the, the one awkward yellow or the most awkward yellow because it's it's up there out of the way and steady hand of Tracy Westling our referee I'm running. so whether Emma thinks she can get that now or whether she's opting to leave that I think that's uh, she's up there now in that area of the table she should look to clear those two yellows if she can now just awkward queuing she's Pull the sleeve up a little bit. Nice oh yeah. shot. Didn't try and force it too much. And uh, so the outcome of this match could rest on just one good shot here from Emma Cunningham. And winning this frame is just well, it's just the icing on the cake really for Emma's season. European champion, World Masters champion. Oh dear. Uh, just as we've talked it up, mm -hmm. she's missed the yellow. And the thing is, she wasn't really playing particularly a, a positional shot there, she was just dropping it in. Just that anxious over the line shot. As we say, always hardest to win the last frame, but a lot easier when you've got a five frame cushion like this. You know she's going to have several chances to do it. Somehow take the pressure off a bit. Renata, on the other hand, knowing that any mistake could easily be her last one. Um, and again, a, a presentable chance, but is it easy enough? This shot up the left hand rail under normal circumstances wouldn't be too bad, but she does need to screw the white back a bit. It's reasonably close to the cushion, so by no means a formality this shot. She lines up this shot, she just doesn't look like she's going to get a lot of power on it somehow. She's, you see there, just a little bit tentative. A lot of players would have got through, that would have been Emma, she'd have been through it a lot more, yeah. screwed back. Because I mean, even if that had gone in, yet again, she's not really on anything else. I think if you are struggling now, you tend to tense up a bit, you know. Obviously the ideal is to just relax and use your cue arm. But that's the difference really, Emma does look much more comfortable out there. Yeah, it's one of those inexplicable things, you, you know back at your own club you can play all of those shots and then you get out there and just feel the kind of tension that just slows your arm down. Unfortunately, as you stop going through the board you also lose some of the accuracy and that, that leads to some of these problems. Superb shot there from Emma Cunningham. Lots of power. Very precise. Got the cue ball back out from those where those reds are. So now just four shots away. Four balls away from that second world title. I mean, she must have sat there several times over the last few years thinking, when will I ever get a chance, you know, a, a good chance to secure my second title? Because she's turned up and Sue Thompson's just powered away from her. But, uh, she's she won't get a better chance than this, Sean. No. Just drop this yellow in now for the yellow on the rail. And one good shot here, and it's elementary. So he's just taking her time here, Emma. Knows how important this, right? She's got a five frame lead, but she doesn't want to be giving any frames away. She's just one frame away from the title. And she wants to secure that title as quickly as possible here. Well, 
she's jawed it but she's not left it easy for Anata as she's got at least one ball over that right hand side of the table obviously it doesn't go bottom left bottom right rather so uh, quite a bit of work to do Just looking to play the containing shot here. Just uh, is she? Oh, she's going to just cut this in. Well, she opted to try and cut it in, and uh, and develop the other red. But, uh, she's not done either. Yeah, we're just looking there. She's going to got to take the rest here. Drop this one in over the corner pocket. So Emma Cunningham hedges ever closer to that world crown. Tips quite some way from the cue ball. Yeah, yeah she's a long way off with this. And, and she's playing this from a long way away. This could go horribly long, wrong. And uh, that wasn't the best shot in the world. She wanted a lot thinner contact than that. With the cue ball almost in the jaws. It's made the pot quite hard, really. And obviously, she's going straight into the red, which she'll just want to kiss out the way of the black. Yeah, I think all she can it's do here is just to trust to the pot it, yeah. and hope that she gets the position. I think that's all she can do here. She thinks she might just hit the clip the left hand side. No, yeah. she's hit it full in the face, and that's perfect. <laughs> Absolutely perfect for Emma Cunningham. And this eight ball, left hand middle for the title. It's there, and Emma Cunningham is the 2011 World Eight Ball Pool Ladies Champion. Fantastic performance there. I mean, congratulations go to Renata Delonte in reaching this final. But it doesn't, just didn't really happen for her this afternoon. And uh, Emma Cunningham has played some fantastic pool and made a great effort there in securing her second world title. I'm very pleased to be joined by Emma Cunningham, the new 2011 world champion, who's just completed an 8-2 victory over Australia's Renata Delahunty. Emma, world champion for the second time. How does it feel? Brilliant. Um you know, wanted nothing more than to pick up this trophy just one more time, you know, I'm over the moon. I mean, it seems hard to believe, I think you're only 24 and you've already been in the final something like seven times, it feels like you deserve to be twice that by now. Was it, was it strange, first final where your opponent wasn't Sue Thompson, how did that feel? Yeah, I, d I didn't really know how to approach it or, or think, because normally, you know, it's always Sue sat in that chair and... Um, I just thought, focus on the balls and hopefully I can play the, as well as I've been playing for the last two weeks. And does it add an additional pressure knowing you're on paper the favourite for the match? Um, I was trying not to think too much about it because I kind of believe there are no favourites. You know, on the day anybody can win and we both, you know, need to take our chances because we will get some, you know. And what have you done by way of preparation? I know you've got very vocal support from your county teammates here. Has that helped? Oh, yeah. I'm, you know, so grateful for them to come up. You know, uh, Victoria, Lisa, John Jody, rest of Bucks Bunnies, you know, constantly texting and on Facebook. And then I've got my family back in Ireland, you know, my nanny, um, my mum, my dad, my sister, all texting, you know, frantically waiting to find out how I'm getting on. And I hope they're proud of me. I think they'll definitely be proud of you. You're now the European champion, the World Masters champion and the World champion. Anything else to add to that list? It's just phenomenal that I've, I've had a year like this. You know, it's only something players could dream of. And, you know, I, I don't really know what to say about it. I don't think it's all quite sunk in yet. No, well, long way to continue. Congratulations once again, Emma.